Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this episode of Back to Basics, we're going to take a look at the UV Editor and Basic UV Unwrapping. The UV Editor is a special editor for dealing with UV unwrapping and UV maps. This is the process of slicing up a 3D object into a two-dimensional space. So if you think of a 3D model like a paper craft object, then slice that object along enough of its edges so that it can flatten out, that flattened out object is the UV map. This allows us to draw on that flattened out object in a 2D file, like a PNG or a JPEG or some other image, and then fold it back up onto our 3D object. And so data placed on this grid is then transposed onto our 3D object using the UV map. Default mesh objects in Blender have default UV maps created automatically. Here, I'll add a cube. Going into edit mode, we'll see the UV map on this object. Now an object can have multiple UV maps. By using the object data properties window and expanding UV maps, we see the default one here, but we can click the plus sign and add another one. If an object has more than one UV map assigned, you can switch which active UV map you're editing by selecting it either here in the properties window or here in this dropdown in the UV editor or I can delete them all from here. Replacing my cube with something more complicated, like say, an icosphere, I'm going to remove its default UV map. Going into edit mode and having all the vertices selected, I'll press U. This brings up the UV mapping menu. There are many different modes of UV unwrapping. First, the unwrap method tries to flatten out the object as smoothly as it can. As you can see for this icosphere, it overlapped every triangle in the corner. This isn't very helpful. This is because the icosphere is seamless, and so the unwrap method has no way to flatten it out nicely. We can assist it by adding seams. Going into edge select mode, I can choose several edges, right click, and say mark seam. Now selecting all edges, hitting U for unwrap, you'll see that the algorithm did a much better job. However, some faces are very stretched, while others are very dense. This means we should probably add some more seams. That's starting to look better. I can unmark seams by right-clicking and hitting Clear Seam. The Smart UV Project Mode uses extra projection angles to try to make a better map, although you're going to end up with more islands rather than one contiguous shape. Light Map Pack is a special mode that's used for game engine exports. Follow Active Quads is a way to make certain loops of quad faces line up nicely. Cube, Cylinder, and Sphere Projection are mapping methods that project the UVs for the object as if it was being looked at from a cube, a cylinder, or sphere around the objects. Shapes that are similar to these can benefit from these unwrapping methods. So if you have a spherical type object, a sphere projection might be a good choice. Project from view takes an x-ray view of your object from the active 3D viewport. It's like putting your object into wireframe view mode and then copying that straight into the UV editor. In this mode, you'll have the back faces of your object overlapping the front faces. This mode is really good for mapping decals onto an object. You just line up the object with where you want the decal and use project from view. The Project From View Bounds mode does the same thing, but it stretches out the UV map as much as it can in the UV editor. All of these unwrap methods will only work with the selected faces. That means you can unwrap different parts of your model at different times. So if I only wanted to unwrap these faces, I could use the unwrap method. And then on these faces, I could use Project From View. And then when I select all, I would see them where I've put them. However, right now, they're quite a mess. This is where we can look at some other tools of the UV Editor. The 2D UV map works much like a 3D mesh. You can select vertices and move, rotate, and scale. You can select edges, faces, and then this extra option, islands. This is where we can take each of these parts that we unwrapped separately, scale them, and move them. The goal of the UV Editor is usually to map an image to your object. 
This is not always the case, but it is most of the time. So we can load an image into the background of our UV editor. We can use the drop down in the header to choose an already loaded image, or we can open an existing image or create a new one. One very helpful option under new is the generated type of UV grid. This creates a very handy image that you can map onto your objects. One thing to note here is that even though you have an image loaded behind your UV map, it does not automatically put this onto the model. To view this on our object, we'll need to create a material. Let's jump over to the shading workspace, add a new material, and then we're gonna add three nodes. First, an input texture coordinates, then a vector mapping node, and then a texture, image texture. The image will be plugged into the base color, the mapping vector will be inputted into the vector, and the UV will go into the vector. So this says, using the default UV map on this object, put it into this mapping node. In this particular video, we're not gonna change any of the mapping node settings. And then, that mapping is put into our image texture, which in turn, becomes the base color of our material. In our image texture, let's choose our untitled UV grid. Going back to our UV editing workspace and putting it in material preview mode, now we can see our material on our object. Starting with no UV map, I'm going to go ahead and unwrap this icosphere again. I'm going to mark a few seams and unwrap one more time. Now, under the UV menu, there are many options for working with these UVs. Pinning verts will keep those in place when we do an unwrap. Let's say I wanted to keep this section in place when I unwrapped. I can pin these vertices. They're now marked with red dots. If I make additional cuts on my object and unwrap again, you'll see that a new solution has been created. If I choose Live Unwrap, select one of these pinned verts and move it, a new solution will be created, taking into account the pinned vertices. Let's delete this UV map and clear all of our seams. Now I will do a smart UV project. If you're in vertex, edge, or face select mode, and you want to select an entire island, press the L key to select the linked vertices. Let's say for instance, you have this UV layout with these overlappings. One thing we can do is say average island scale. This will try to make all of the islands approximately the same size. Now I can scale them all down and under UV, I can pack the islands. Pack islands will arrange the islands as best it can without overlapping them. Another option that's really handy is the UV sync selection button. By default, you're only shown the selected vertices in the UV editor. However, if you'd like to see all of them at the same time, go ahead and hit this UV Sync Selection button. Now, when you have an object selected, you'll see all of its vertices in the UV Editor. But as you select UVs in the UV Editor, or on your model, th that selection will stay synchronized with one another. One more item to mention before we finish is under the UV menu, the Export UV Layout. This will save the current UV layout to a PNG file. You can then bring this PNG file into another application of your choice, like Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, and then you can paint over it. Then you can use that to re-import your textures back into Blender when you're done. In the end, creating effective UV map layouts can really make a big difference in texturing your models. This video is not really intended as a full-blown how to create the best UV map video. It was more of an introduction into the workspace. I hope this intro to the UV editor and unwrapping has been helpful. If you're finding this series useful, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch the video. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. I'll see you next time.